done. Quite serious. Where is it? Will my husband find out Maybe about Maybe he'll it? think twice when he does find out. Man with a camera. Starring Charles Bronson. Mike Kovac, photographer. When I arrived at the airport in San Diego, my police detective friend, Ed Kern, was there to meet me. Ed had telephoned me yesterday in New York. He wanted to hire me. He said it was urgent, so I had flown out to meet him on the West Coast. Well, it's about my wife, Jill. She's missing, and I want you to find her for me. Ed, you're a policeman. You've got a thousand buddies on a voice. Why do you want me? Well, the thing is, when we were married, there was a lot of talk, even in the department. See, the first time I ever met Jill is when I arrested her. She was working for a cheap chiseler who was running a phony escort service. I brought her in, booked her, and got her to talk. Then this fresh kid in the prosecutor's office tried to build himself a case. He twisted everything around so it looked like she was part of the racket, but it wasn't true. She was just hungry and scared and broke. And the newspaper said I married her to avoid testifying. Did you? No. No, I didn't. Look, Mike, I love Jill. That's why I married her. It's why I called on you. If I turn this over to missing persons, it'll be in the newspaper tomorrow, and they'll drag her right back through that muck all over again. Well, that's fine. It's OK. If it brought her back. You're asking me to do something you don't think your own department can? No, I'm only asking you to believe the same thing I do. Look, Mike, I know the routine. The husband comes home early and finds his wife missing. Ninety-nine times out of a hundred, it's one of three things. She's either gone on the spree with a joint bank account, gone home to mother, or she skipped with another guy. Well, our bank account hasn't got enough money for her to get four miles. And she doesn't have a mother. What about the third possibility? Okay, Ed. I believe. I'll play it your way. The last time you saw Joe was when? Day before yesterday. She drove me down to the station to catch the train for L.A. I got back yesterday noon. I didn't even call her and tell her I was getting back early. But Mike, she just wasn't here. She hasn't been here in two nights. Take it easy. Easy. That's easy for you to say. Jill, I had no idea you could wrap up your case in one day, huh? What are you trying to say, Mike? Ed, let's pretend I am the law. I'll ask the questions and you answer them. Okay. Well? Well, she figured I'd be gone for four or five days. It's what I told her. Then, on the other hand... Mike, you don't think, but... I don't think anything yet. What's the matter with you? What about family? No, she hasn't got any, as far as I know. Well, I just accept the brother in El Paso, Texas, by the name of Bob I've never met. But you can forget that, because I called him. 
Any chance you might have followed you to L.A.? No, not L.A. or any place else. Look, I checked out the bus depot, the airport, the, the railroad station. I even checked out the taxi reports. Look, Mike, this is my wife, Jill. I'm married to her. I know how this girl thinks. Two years next month. Must be that kid next door. I'm just jumpy at everything. Well, let's not just stand around beating our gums. You hired me to find your wife, though, so let's check out her routines. Look, Mike, I told you. I said let's check out her routines. What'd she do on Tuesday? Hey, I mean, she comes in here same as every Tuesday, only her wash isn't ready. But maybe an hour the truck will be back. So she says, okay, she'll take a car to the station down the block and have it washed and looped. Well, like I said, an hour. Only a wash is here and she never shows up. What else she say? Well, like what? Anything. Come on, squeeze your brain. Everything she said. Well, like we talked. Like uh, I kidded her about how it's lonely being married to a cop and she kids back about how she's gonna make some changes. What do you mean by that crack? Well, that's what she said. I said, what do you mean? Take it easy, Ed. I want to know what he meant by that crap. I didn't say nothing. Come on, let's get out of here. You think like all the rest of them. What do you know about Jill? What do you care? Ed, from now on, this is my case alone. You understand that? Okay, okay. Mike, I'm scared. I'm really scared. You haven't got time to be scared. What do you mean? We either get a lead in the next couple of hours. You put out an all-points bulletin. I can't go to the department. I told you I've decided what. You haven't got the right to decide. Now, I'd like to use your car. I've got to check that gas station a couple other places. I'll drop you off at headquarters. Sure. Oh, uh, Mike. <laughs> Better drop me off at a house. i got to testify at a hearing, and I've been in this for a couple of days. Mike, you've got to find her for me. No matter where she's gone or why, you've got to find her. I took Ed home so he could change clothes. I was going on to the service station where Jill had her car washed and looped. wash remembered Jill. She was a regular customer. And the last time in, she had her car washed, lubed, and steam cleaned, and she'd left a package. He was saving it for her in the office. I took it off the front seat when I washed the car. Forgot to give it to her when she left. You'd think she'd come back for this had she known she lost it, wouldn't you? Yeah, you'd think that, yeah. Ed was still testifying in court. I waited outside the courtroom to tell him what I'd learned about Jill. Hiya, Mike. Find anything? Oh, well, maybe something, maybe nothing. But I know where Jill went after she left you off at the station. Where? Tijuana. Tijuana? What for? To buy this. Maybe it's a present for you. You know, Tijuana's only a half hour from here. This is the bill that says one pair of initial cufflinks. There's only one thing wrong, Mike. What? This isn't my initial. Well, it's the initial R. Well, whose initial is R? Mike, do you think maybe this is some guy? No. 
And don't you start thinking that either. I'll belt you one, Ed. Now, when are you through here? Oh, I have to wait till they call me. When you're all done, hang around the office. I might be calling. Yeah, sure. <laughs> From San Diego, I went across the border to Tijuana, over the trail that Jill might have taken. I wanted to check the little shop where she had bought the cufflinks. The cufflinks with the wrong initials. There's something I can show you? Looking for the manager. I am the owner. Oh, then you're Mr. Ganza. Yes. Remember the woman that bought these day before yesterday? Well, we have so many customers. Another shop, perhaps. Your shop. Signed and dated. Well, it's apparently you're right. This is my handwriting and the lady's name and address. The customary duplicate form. Protection for the tourists. Yes, yes, I do remember her now. Excellent taste. Hand buff silver, the cufflinks. A birthday gift. For who? Oh, of course, I did not ask her. I'm sorry I cannot be of help to you. I'll just keep that. Yes, of course. Thanks. You are from the San Diego police, no doubt. Why? Uh, merely your questions. Well, you might just say that I'm a husband looking for his wife. That is, if you know anybody that's interested. Of course. In fact, you can rely on it. That's just what I'll do, Mr. Ganza. Rely on it. A wire photo of Senior Ganza was on its way from the news bureau in Tijuana. I had telephoned Ed, and he was standing by in San Diego waiting for the picture to come in. Ed? I'm sorry you had to go to the news service office, but I think this picture's important. Does he know you got his picture? No. I used the miniature camera set. Looks like a cigarette lighter. Now, this is the dope. Carl Ganza. G-A-N-Z-A. -A. He's got a gift shop down here. Check him out for me, will you? Find out where he's from, who he is, and if he's mixed up in any border rackets like dope, hot cars, even parakeets. And Ed, don't get your hopes too high, but I threw out some bait, and I think maybe they swallowed it. But it's still just a guess. Hey, Mike. Hold on a minute. down there by that hat stand. I've seen him around, Mike. He's no tourist. So why is he nosing around that display? That's a good question. Oh, yeah. Gans is shot. This, blow it up and send it out of the wire, will you? Right. Ed, I've got another one for you. It might take a while, though. Now, this guy I don't know, so you're gonna have to mug him through the files. And hurry up on it, will you, Ed? And I'll call you back later at your office. Oh, what you were worried about. Forget it. On my way back to San Diego, I stopped at the border to check out a hunch with the customs authorities. Kovac, Kovac. Sure, New York, right? Right. You want a case down here? Oh, just sort of checking out a theory for a friend. Smuggling over the line here? Well, I don't say it can't be done. But that's why we're here to stop it. Well, look, this is just an idea. Let's see if it makes sense. Now, suppose a housewife leaves uh, San Diego drives to Tijuana to buy a gift for a friend, something like a pair of cufflinks. And she finds what she wants in a shop. Now the clerk wraps it up and gives her a receipt. Customary procedure. That's for us, valuation check at customs. 
Well, now he writes her name and address on the receipt. No reason for that at all. You mean if it's legitimate? But suppose they want a carbon of the address for later. While the clerk is wrapping the gift and making out the receipt, another man is hiding something in her car. Now, she innocently crosses the border and goes home. And later, the smugglers go to the car, take the stuff out, and just walk away. Not out of the car. They wouldn't take a chance on her finding it. They more than likely tape it under the car. Yeah. Sure. Under the car. Would it work? No. Well, why not? We've got boys below the border that know when shipments are going to be made. We usually know just when and where to look. Well, suppose you didn't know when and where to look. Our housewife could get through, right? Mm-hmm. Thank you. Harry? Yes, sir. Listen, have the boys start checking under more cars. Under the car? That's right, under. I don't care how much time it takes. Okay. down on Ganza doesn't show much. U.S. citizen, no felony convictions, no known connection with the rackets. The other guy's something else again. He's a tough baby. Joe Huss, alias Joe Hart, armed assault, terror, hot homicide, New Orleans. He's up for grabs. That figures. Ed, these are our boys, all right. We'll have to make the move at your end. Now listen. Give me a half hour, then head for that car wash where Jill had her car cleaned. What happens to you? Well, I'm gonna let them catch the mechanical rabbits. And I got a hunch you're not gonna like the taste. Okay, Mike. Okay, you caught up with me. I'm ready to make a deal. Sure, it's bargain day. I'm listening. You take me to Jill and I'll get you the stuff. That's the right idea. Just twist it around a little. Press the diamonds. Okay. Your car. trying to pull, my friend. Why here? Because this is the only place they could be. Jill didn't know the diamonds were stuck under the car. I had told Ed to meet me at the car wash in half an hour. But he wasn't around. I'd have to stall. Maybe 60 seconds to make up your mind. Let's see, Jill had her car steam clean. Must have happened then. Yeah.
let me kill him right now. What would you prefer? A dead man or $160,000 in diamonds? There'll be time later. This whole setup smells like an act to me. We're through waiting. What about Jill? The diamonds. No talk. No bargains. Well, now listen. Jill had the car steam clean. Like this, see? And I figured that it steamed all the dirt and grease out from under the car, including your little bag of goodies. Now, it's probably right down in here. a minute when a girl's married to a detective what you got to be afraid of i knew ed would find me well really sweetie it wasn't me you it are was... married to a fine cop the best jill i think this belongs to you oh bob's present now it'll be late for his birthday bob's are oh, sure robert her brother what a great cop i am yeah what a great cop you are i asked you to meet me at that car wash where were you I was there, Mike. I thought I'd lay low, lay, maybe they'd spill to you. And if they had shot me instead? Well, that's the chance I had to take. You had to take. Come on. 